In this video, we'll be exploring Fresh, a modern next generation web framework. It's built for speed, reliability, and simplicity. And it doesn't ship any JavaScript to the browser unless you use one of the dynamic islands. It's got support for TypeScript. There's no configuration needed to get set up and it works on Dino. If you've used a modern JavaScript framework over the last few years, you probably feel already at home with the support for JSX. In this video, we'll be connecting our GraphQL backend to our Fresh application so we can make this guestbook work. We want to allow users to post new messages and when they submit, we want this to happen on the server that sends a request to our GraphQL backend and then updates the front end. The handler for get will return this data using the context.render method. Then that render method here is exported as default. And here we have the title for the page, our form, and then we have our list of messages. I already have a GraphQL backend running that I can make mutations and queries to. This is using the GraphBase CLI. If we now move to the handler here, we can update this const data to actually make a request to our GraphQL backend. So let's remove this static data and then we'll update get to be an async function. Then we will await fetch and then we can insert the URL to our GraphQL API. And you could of course use an environment variable here. And then because we're using the native fetch implementation, we can pass the, the method as post. And for our headers, here we'll specify that we want to send the content type as application JSON. Then we can pass our query inside of the body. For query, let's pass a template literal here. And this will be our GraphQL query. And here, let's name our query, get all messages. And we'll use some GraphQL variables. Then let's call the query message collection. We'll pass in our variable first. Then for each of our edges, we'll grab the node. We'll get the ID the author name, the message, and the created at date timestamp. Now we have this query, we'll need to also pass some variables and we'll pass 10 for our first variable value. Let's update the name of our data variable here to be response. Then we can check to see whether our response is okay. And if it's not okay, we can render no. Then from our response, we'll destructure data and here we'll call response.json. Now, if we save and we go back to our application, we should see here that we don't have anything. And this is because there's no data in our backend. To make this work, let's update our form. So when we submit, it's saved to the backend. Just like we have a get request here, we can add another handler. This time we'll make an async post request. The first argument will be the request itself. And the second will be the context. When we submit the form, we can get the form data from the request. So let's make a new const and we'll call this form data. And we'll await request.formData. Then let's make this JSON by using from entries and passing the form data value. Then we can make another GraphQL request just like we did before. So here we'll await fetch. We'll pass in the endpoint to our GraphQL API. We'll make sure that this is a post request. We pass those same headers. And then for our body, we pass our query value. This time, this will be a GraphQL mutation and we'll call the mutation add new message. This will take some variables, author and message. We'll then invoke the message create mutation, passing the input argument, and we'll pass along those variables. We'll now pass the variables that's needed for this GraphQL mutation. And here we'll pass the author as json.author. And for the message, we'll pass json.message. Now, all that's left to do is re-execute the query that we had previously, and then return that JSON data. So if we go above and we copy this response from our get request. And further on down here, we add this here. And then just like we did before, if the response is not okay, we'll simply return no. Otherwise we'll destructure data from the response JSON. And now we can render that data. So inside of our post request here, we capture the form data. We transform it as JSON. We then make a request to our backend by passing the variables author and message. We then make another request back to our backend to get the updated messages. And then we return that data as JSON. If we go back and submit our form, we can see here that we have a new message when we submitted that form. You can improve and simplify this by wrapping the fetch request by automatically passing the URL, the post, the headers, and the structure of the body. I'll leave that to you, but hopefully this has given you enough to get started using Fresh and GraphQL as your backend. 